how are you? I'm so excited. Today I get to finally meet Professor Ardain Isma, who is the author of Midnight at Noon. He is from Haiti, and we're looking forward to getting to know a little bit more about his book and how his book connects to Haiti, as well as the old city St. Augustine and Green Cove Springs, and how all that coincides together. Midnight at Noon is rated five stars on Amazon, so get your copy today. Thank you again, Professor Ardain Isma. Looking forward to meeting you. On my way. So, Professor Ardain Isma, nice to see you today. The author of uh, Midnight at Noon. Yes, uh, Midnight at Noon, uh, why such a name? Well, it's very funny, you're not the first person to ask such a question. Because uh, there is some sort of, it's a metaphor, mm -hmm. uh, which means when something happened unexpected, but it's true, it's a reality. Since this book is based on contemporary history of, uh, of Haiti, it's turmoil, it's political turmoil. So uh, many things happened between 1980 and I would say 2000. Right. And so things that were so troubling. Mm -hmm. And so the whole story is based on that. And of course, uh, with a historical perspective. Right, right. The history of Haiti itself. So. Right. Now, uh, Midnight at Noon is rated five stars on Amazon. Um, are there any other book projects that you have? Oh, yeah, several. You do? Yeah, this is the first time, actually. You know what? Since Midnight, okay. even mid even before Midnight was published, I had conceived two manuscripts within the course of getting Midnight ready and right, polishing right. it, mm -hmm. editing it. And then, there comes this whole story of uh, uh, the waste issue in the United States mm -hmm. and, uh, with the atmosphere of you know what we have right now for a minority and Hispanic whether you're Hispanic whether you're African Americans or you're Asian American I feel compelled to go back to a very important document that was published in 1883 by a Haitian scholar lived in Paris at that time and the title of the book is uh, the Equality of Human Races and his book was in response to a gentleman called Cart Arthur de Gobineau mm -hmm. who created the, uh, I would say, uh, the ideology of white supremacy. So they use uh, scientific reasoning supposedly okay. to justify somehow if you are a white person then you're prone to lead and right. govern. Right. So his response to that, if someone is not in a position to think rationally, maybe educationally or scientifically, it's not because of his race, but it's because of lack of opportunity. Because beneath the skin, we all the same. That's right. And as long as you have a heart that beats and a brain that functions, and you can preserve your dignity, then you can always make it in any difficult situation. That's right. And he wrote this manuscript in 1850, which is uh, at a time when uh, I would say that slavery was still a reality in the sure, sure. except for Haiti. Right. Now, if I have it correct, you were born in Haiti, is that correct? I was. Okay, and is that the reason why you've chosen social justice as your main theme, being, you know, being from Haiti? It's part of it. Sometimes I get the people, for example, I have my own children, I have three children, and each of them has his own character, <laughs> okay. you know. But to me, social justice, if I, I would say it is something that I was born with. Right. It's in me, right? So I can't really stand by and pretend it's not happening. It's me. Right. But for someone else, it could be very different. Mm -hmm. so there, there are people who simply just going through life as if you know we're just going through life. Right, right. It's not me. 
wherever it is, it's not just because it's Haiti, but of course the history of Haiti, you know, can uh, propel someone to take a stronger stand against everything that's wrong in society. Right. You know, uh, the story of Haiti over the last 100 years has been a, a story of devastation, humiliation, extermination, and occupation. So it's, it's really, you cannot be an educated person of Haitian origin. So, and thinking that you wake up every day, you can go to life. Yeah. As if, <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> now, how long did it take you to write the novel, uh, Midnight at New? I know, uh, Christina, it took me at least three years. Wow. I started this now, I went to Poulon when I was in Paris. In the hotel in Paris, I went to Poulon. It's not the one that you have now. Right. It, it was just enough for me to, to keep on writing. So, when I came home, I reframed the story. Okay. And I wanted to write a story based on everything that I believed when I was 20. I see. So when you're 20 or when you're old, 20 or from 20 to 30, so the revolutionary romanticism right. is so strong. Yeah. Everything has to be seen in black and white. Right, right. You know, from that perspective. But since the history of Haiti is so different, so I figure, um, first I did a lot of research writing the way okay. you see I wrote this book, um, I'm, not, I'm not a big pretender. I'm not going to say that this is the best uh, novel ever written. Mm -hmm. no, I don't carry such pretense. But the way this book is written, it's very difficult to find a book right. based on Caribbean literature, not just on Haitian literature, mm -hmm. to be written this way. Because right. it is the first time I used not just class antagonism, but I also use uh, warfare ah. to justify the position of those who have been disenfranchised. I see, I see. That's interesting. Now, I know a big part of the setting takes place in the northern providence of Haiti yeah. uh, in a town called St. Louis, if yeah. I have that right. Mm -hmm. Now, is that fictional or real? No, St. Louis is, is real. It is? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the story actually is fictional, but all the places that I mentioned in Haiti, mm -hmm. these are real places. In fact, these are historical places um, that left Denmark during the War of Independence against France. Mm -hmm. um, St. Louis, that's where I was born. Okay. And I lived there up until I was 12. Wow. And then I, uh, can, I went to school in Port au Yes. So when I was 17, so I came to States, I've been living oh, here. Okay. So you've been here since you're 17? Yeah. Now I see that um, you you really take this story also to St. Augustine and Green Cove Springs. So <laughs> why is there such a connection with, you know, St. Louis, Haiti and St. Augustine? Augustine. Yeah. It's not just because I live in St. Augustine. Of course, I've been living here for 11 years now. Okay. But it's, it is because the historical connection between Haiti and St. Augustine. In fact, when the Spaniard first discovered, you know St. Augustine is the oldest structure settlement in the United States. There was a, a, a general, a black general, his name is Jean-Francois Biasou. He, he was of the, he rebelled against, he rebelled a, against the French, and then he switched side and went to this uh, Spanish side of the island. Mm -hmm. And then he, he enrolled into the Spanish army, the Spanish colonial army, on the eastern side of the island. So when uh, General Toussaint Louverture uh, controlled the entire island, and he was in opposition to Toussaint, so he fled with the Spaniard, and he, he moved here in St. Augustine. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, there's a piece I wrote in, in, in CSMS magazine, which is the magazine that I chief editor. Uh, I made I, I made I made I made reference to his presence right. with the uh, Spanish expedition to uh, St. Augustine. Now, if you don't mind me asking, um, the cover of Midnight at Noon. Uh, where was this photo taken? Is this photo in Haiti or in St. Augustine? <laughs> not quite in St. Augustine, but not far from it. I, as beautiful. you can see yeah. uh, uh, here, 
is uh, you can see it appears like a river and then some trees faded in the distance. Yeah. Okay, it's just like yeah, like I really we love have the that. twilight zone. And I love it. I was taking uh, the um, on the banks of the St. John's River. Okay, yeah, yeah. Very so okay. the publisher was asking me because of the title of the book mm -hmm. if I really had something that would match with the title. And then I took my wife down to the restaurant, very cozy, right on the bank. And then I start taking pictures and I realize that you know what that could match with it. I'm just gonna send it over. I work. I hope that and they sent it they, over and, and they, they approved they, it, right? Approved it, yes. Yeah. Well, it's fabulous. Thank you so very much. It's a pleasure to meet you. You know, to read your book and to think in the time to sit down and talk about it. It was mine. <laughs>